Alright, welcome to a run through of a Python weather app. So let me demonstrate the weather app first. This is using Beautiful Soup and um, Google to search for the weather. So let's enter an example city. It's say New York City. And we will get that it is partly cloudy uh, with a temperature of 76 degrees. And if we check that in Google, let's say New York City weather, then we'll get the same thing, 76 and partly cloudy. The only thing really missing is the nighttime element because it's nine o'clock, but for the most part, uh, it's correct. And so I'm just gonna do a little code walkthrough how I implemented this and yeah so let's start off with the import statements so um, we're gonna be using tkinter you just import star so it imports everything we're gonna use the Python request module to make requests to a Google URL that we will try and extract data from and then uh, beautiful soup is here and um, in the background we saw that there's an image that's a preloaded image so we're going to use the image and image tk um, import statements in order to kind of put an image on the on the uh, tkinter window and then from date time we import date time that'll be for um, the session so when we come oh i forgot to mention something is that all information for the session is available in session number dot text. So it basically just adds, so once we quit, it adds a new file and it says the input time. So when we entered the uh, weather and then it says location, when the button was pressed, uh, when, uh, so it uses this input time and then it finds the uh, local time in New York City, which is nine o'clock. Um, the weather 76 and the condition which is partly cloudy saves all in a file after exiting the program so let's start so we have a class here main application and in our initialization we're gonna have a window and that window when we come down here is going to be a TK window And so we're gonna set the window to be window. We're gonna set the ID to be um, zero. That's kind of just a placeholder for now until we update the session ID to match. You can see here zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So when we run the program next, it's gonna make a session six.txt file for whatever information we put there. So now we're gonna create the canvas in order to insert images. So uh, we're gonna have a self.canvas as a tkinter canvas uh, with the window, the width of 400, height of 400, and the background will be white. The, um, excuse me, the grid will be, this grid will be column, row one, column one. Oh yes, that's because we only want one image, so we're only gonna need, um, you know, one row and one column to insert one image. So we want that one row and one column to spread over the whole screen. Next, we'll have the welcome label. So the welcome label, let's run this again, uh, is here, enter the city. The more specific, the better. That is the welcome label. And we're gonna place that at the coordinates 2020. The text box, which is this object here, will be placed, uh, or we'll have a width of 17 for entering you know, a little bit longer city names and or more descriptive places and the height of one. The font of the text box is going to be Comic Sans. So when we enter, uh, you know, say Paris, that's Comic Sans font right there. And we're going to uh, configure the state of the text box. So we're gonna, the font is going to be the font tuple, which is here. So the 
Comic Sans font and the font size of 12. The state is normal. I found that when doing uh, when setting the state to normal, this allows for deletion um, of the text box. Whereas if I had done something like this, I could not delete the text box. Could be wrong on that, but that's how I did it. And then we're going to place that at uh, 225 and 30. I also could have used um, kind of the grid to place these using insets, uh, but I chose just your coordinates as the, uh, I don't believe the window is resizable. Oh, it is. Okay, perhaps I should have made the window not resizable, but <laughs> live and you learn. So we're going to have the quit button. Um, that's just a button with text quit and the command is self.quit, which will be right here. And then the quit button is placed at coordinates 175 and 350. Then finally, the submit button will be a button that has text submit, which we see here. Oh, and the quit button here. Uh, you can see it's not quite centered, so it's definitely better to use um, kind of a, a proper layout technique. On Python, I'm not sure what that is. It's probably just it's probably just something like this, and I have to properly use it right but I chose to stick with coordinates and if you choose to stick with coordinates it's preferable to make the window uh, set resizable to false because you don't want um, something like this oh, something like this where your window is resized but all your elements are still in the default uh, window size so we're going to move that back I can. There we go. We're going to move it back approximately to where it was. Alright, so when we um, exit oh, to exit the program, so when we exit the program, we're just going to have a simple print statement saying the quit button has been pressed, and we're just going to uh, call the exit function with uh, exit code 1. So now let's go on to, we'll go back to the functions later. Let's go here to the end. So the end, um, I could use if main here. Um, so for example, if, oops, if main, oh, whoops, if name, name equals main, then I could run um, all these. If I chose to not do that, usually it's better practice, I believe. I'm not sure we're going there. It's better practice to do it that way so that uh, when other people read your code, they're going to um, see that, um, okay, this is a file that I can run. So let's actually do that. So if, uh, I believe I can just do, name. I thought there was a shortcut here. If name, I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> let's do, if name equals, equals, main we're gonna call it main function and then we're just going to cut and paste so let's see this should work let's just make a quick test let's just rerun okay fantastic and okay so this is better practice let's use this practice um and if we um okay if we look at the main function here so we create a new window um tk uh using tkinter you can call the geometry of 400 400 this is the window size and then we're going to create this new main application object passing in a window is the only parameter um because as we saw up here whatever window we pass in becomes the uh, the window, I guess, if that makes sense. So the self.window becomes the window that we pass in. And here we're gonna do find session ID. So you remember earlier, we said self.id is zero. So now we want to actually change the ID. So that is a function at the end of the class right here. So basically, we are just trying to um, find what the next number is. So every new session we want to get a new ID, new ID to save the session's information to a new file uh, with this format here. So we want to update the self ID. So we want to start at zero, assuming none of these files exist. And basically we just want to make a 
an infinite loop here, but it'll always break so long as you don't have infinite files. Um, and we're gonna use a try loop and we're gonna say um, if we keep opening files that have this format here, eventually one of them is gonna throw an error because it doesn't exist. So if we were to call the, or if we were to start the program again, enter some numbers, or enter a city, excuse me, then we would find that eventually we would get to session six dot text. So over here in the right, or in the left, we get to session six dot text, and then uh, we would get a file not found error because the file does not exist, and we would set the self dot id equal to the i value because it keeps in incrementing every time we find a, a file that exists. And now we're going to call window dot main loop, and now um, we can access the buttons. So let's start with the um, submit button first. So the submit button gets the text from the text box. It prints the location here. So we can see down here, New York City was printed. And we're going to delete all the text from the text box in this line here. OK, now we get to the web parsing. So we're going to make a variable called URL. We're going to set that equal to um, a Google search of weather plus whatever uh, location. So it would make a call like this. So let's say, let's copy, paste. And instead of location, we would say new plus, oops, excuse that, New York, New York City, I believe. There we go. And we would get um, the Google search for the New York City website. And um, okay, after that, we're gonna get the soup. So self .get soup is a function. Let's go to that function next. So we have a URL passed in, uh, and it's gonna return a beautiful soup object. So we're gonna make a request to the URL, and if the um, status code is not um, in the 200s that means we have a failure usually a failure is denoted I think um, in the 400s um, but a success is always in the 200s so we can say less than 300 for example and we could say that the weather label uh, could not reach the server because that means that the um, whatever website it was trying to reach uh, did not work Okay, so if that makes sense. And we're going to call an error here, website reach error, which is another function here. Um, okay. So this here is where we, so say, let's show an example. So say, let's say, you say New York City. and we get this information here. So basically, let's say we have an error. So no information found. That's a different error. That is, ah, we'll talk about that later. But let's say that we couldn't reach the server. Basically what we want to happen is that we want to reset this image to just be a blank image, just a white image. So that's what this does here. So it gets the path of a um, of a white background here, and basically what that does is it. Um, oh, sorry. Let me keep going. So we set a new image to be the path, and we want to resize that image to fit within the window, and then we are going to create the image TK of that, of the photo image of that, and we're going to create the image. So um, create image, I believe, is, uh, oh, it's a canvas function. OK. And then you want to restart the main loop with the new image in there. That's what we want to do. And instead of this, I'm going to take, um, I think it'd be better if we just did a relative path. 
copy the relative path and do that. All right, so now, uh, let's see. Here we should also do a relative path. So where does it start? Weather states. So we can do a relative path towards the picture, which we'll see soon. So now that we've returned the soup without any errors, let's come back to our submit button. So here we're gonna make a try statement and we're gonna try and find the weather. So that's gonna be um, in a division um, kind of like, I'm not sure how it's called, but in HTTP or HTML, excuse me, there's like different uh, types of information labels. So there's title, there's div, for example, there's um, header, which is usually denoted as H1 or H2 or H3, and there are attributes. So an attribute is usually, uh, let's say you have a division which stores, or let's say you have a division here, which stores um, these elements, for example. Let's just say that it does. And the adders, so the attributes, is going to find the class, which stores kind of some ID of some sort. So let's say instead this was um, precipitation for short, or just for an example, then we would be able to, be, to get the precipitation. But that is usually not that straightforward. Usually you have to find usually you have to find the certain ID kind of. It's very uh, specific. I suppose it's not like oh precipitation. Um, but we want to find that and we want to convert it to a text. Converts to text. Converts to string. And then we want to find the a uh, string, another string that contains time and sky descriptions. So this will be the time. So if we go into session five, it'll find this time, this local time, and it'll find the condition. That's what the second statement here does. And so, okay. So we have a try. What happens in the attribute error? So an attribute error means that it cannot find information here. So let's say, for example, if we were to say um, Bob weather, we don't see kind of like a weather forecast like we do here. So that's going to mean that we get a, when we try and search for these different attributes, we're going to find nothing. So it's going to be an attribute error. You can see adders here. So we don't find those adders or attributes, we're going to attribute error. And so basically what we want to do is we want to set the weather label uh, text information to no information found. So we can see that happening if we put in Bob. It's going to say no information found. Uh, let's just say we put in a city first and then we put Bob. So let's put Paris. Okay, there's a condition. Let's put Bob and it should say no information found. Fantastic. Okay. So then we just want to return because we found no information about the weather. So we don't want to run the next statements, which we'll talk about now. Uh, did I talk about the weather label? I don't know if I mentioned that. Ah, uh, the weather label. So the weather label is just the center piece here, which identifies what the weather is. Or it just gives that general description. So let's say we put in Paris gives the general description the weather in Paris is this, the current condition is this, all information is available in the text file. So let's return back to where we were after the return statement. So now we're going to format the data. So we want, um, we're going to format this data because this data gives us both the time and the uh, condition, whether that's clear or rainy or hazy or anything like this. So what we're going to say is we're going to the string comes in a list because find I believe finds all find gets first occurrence okay maybe I was wrong uh, okay so it gets only the first occurrence so then here splitting on new line means that means what exactly 
Hmm. It's a bit strange. If mine gets only the first occurrence, you wouldn't get a list. Okay. I'm not sure exactly how I did this, but... Well, the time is going to be the first element. So that time would be this right here. And the sky is going to be this element here. So now our weather label uh, text information is going to be this string here. So it's saying the weather in location. Remember we found location here. By getting the text from the text box is the current weather. So the weather we found here the current condition is sky so that's the parsed input here and then all information for this session is available in session.txt so I wasn't really able to format this super well so I had to use new lines I'm still new to Python tkinter in general and uh, GUI design so I should have tried to expand my knowledge and use this use a kind of uh, GUI setting uh, or no, sorry, a uh, kind of like grid bag constraints maybe for, oh, that's in Java, excuse me. Some type of, some type of layout format that would have made my life a little easier. And so we're going to add the information to a text file next because we want to save this information here. Or in these text files, we can see on the left, there's various files with information. So now we're going to add to file. So that's a function of the class and our arguments are going to be the uh, the file name, the location, the time, the weather, and the condition outside. So let's go to that function which is here. So we have the file name, location, time, weather, and sky and our return type is none. So we're just going to open the file name um, and we are going to this A here. So this A basically means that if the file doesn't exist, open it. If or if the file doesn't exist, create it. And if it does exist, we just want to append to the file. So we're going to open as F. Pretty simple Python uh, cheat there. It's very nice and handy. And we're going to get you. We're going to use date time. Remember we imported date time. So that date time is used here. So we're going to say that the time you inputted. Uh, or you search for this location um, is going to be parsed like this and it's going to show up like this here 1803.12 or 603 and um, then we're going to use a just kind of like a, a string builder uh, similar to like Java string builder or something like this so we're just going to um, add various strings just use f strings. I really like f strings, so we're gonna put the time. Then we're gonna make this kind of dashed line here, and then we're going to input the location, the local time, the weather, and the sky. So that's what we do here, and we're just gonna add some new lines here. So for example, uh, let's do. Okay, so if we see here, there's kind of like these gaps. So that's what we want. We don't want it to be too crammed. So we add a couple extra lines and we're just going to write that string to the file. Okay. Oh, yes. So finally, we're going to change the sky image. So that happens when this background image is changed. It starts off as a white image, right? And then it's going to be changed to something different. So we're going to say, okay, let's go to that function next change sky image oops i've completely gone past it here it is <laughs> so it's self and it's sky so sky is the argument and uh, i've denoted here that sky is a string object so the return type is none because all we want to do is just change the picture so basically i've listed by testing i've listed some conditions here and these conditions are in a dictionary and they match up to what the picture should be Makes sense. So basically, we want, for example, we want mostly cloudy and partly sunny to kind of refer to the same picture because you know they're about the same condition. It's just said a little differently, right? So we have mostly cloudy goes to mostly cloudy.png, and we have let's see, partly sunny also goes to mostly cloudy.png. So that's the way I did it, just kind of like seeing different conditions in Google. 
and then just kind of putting in finding pictures off the internet and then just putting in here in a uh, weather states folder so basically with testing i was able to find different conditions like haze um, windy was a condition um, let's see what's the windy picture okay it's that all right <laughs> so um, you know and there might be more conditions that i might miss and if that happens then it will not um, actually display a picture so let's say for example it was hailing I don't have a hail condition here so what I'm just gonna say is uh, we could add that actually so I could say images and we could put hail oops hail weather and oh geez hail is terrible huh <laughs> So let's use this picture. So let's copy that image. Let's put that image here in weather states. Uh, okay, can't really do that that effectively <laughs> from here. So let's. Let's go into weather states and let's paste the picture. Uh, Okay, but I could paste it. Okay, perhaps not. <laughs> I think I'm trying to do something that I just cannot do. So let's just call it hail.png and we'll put it uh, here in weather states. And now we have the hail picture. So now let's add a condition here so let's say hail and we're gonna say hail.png and so now if um, we find a city that has a hail condition it matches up with the corresponding image um, so now we're just gonna do a for loop so we're gonna say for each of these conditions uh, we just have a condition slash picture pair um, condition and picture pair so we're just gonna say if sky contains the condition so the description of sky which is a string which is just put in lowercase just to make things a bit easier uh, we're just gonna print the condition um, I believe that was just uh, I guess if we see New York City it prints the description here and we're gonna say find the path Right, so we find the path, the relative path would be weather states uh, forward slash the picture. And we're going to use image.open and image image.tk.photo image. And then we're going to add the image in the canvas using create image. And then we're going to update the, the window using window.main loop. So that's basically the idea of the program. It's not uh, super high tech, but it's a general start on how to kind of get started with web parsing um, and Python GUI work. So let's see, I believe that will be all for the video. We can just, we can just run a quick little test file here, or a test run. So we'll say, um, let's enter some cities, we'll say New York City. the partly cloudy condition and we're then we'll say um, we'll say London for example London has a temperature of 56 degrees let's say um, some other famous place Dubai How about Dubai Dubai is 81 so current condition is clear with periodic clouds so this is kind of another thing that we run into is that it's hard to put all the conditions in this dictionary here clear with cloudy or periodic clouds is a bit just too descriptive so that's why i just use the contains method here just to see if it contains it so uh, let's put in a couple more cities let's say hong kong comes to mind hong kong is 82 the current condition is cloudy and let's do one more uh, we haven't done one in africa so let's do um, Cape Town. 
So Cape Town is 58 degrees. Remember, it is winter there, so it's pretty cold. Or I guess it's the same weather as London almost. But all right, let's quit here, and now let's go to session seven, not text. So we have New York City, we have London, we have Dubai, Hong Kong, and Cape Town. All the um, uh, locations are saved with their temperature and respective conditions. So I hope this video was helpful uh, in order to get some uh, beginner Python GUI experience.